and welcome to my channel. So our today's topic is posterior palatal seal. What we are going to study is what is actually posterior palatal seal, what is pterygomaxillary seal, significance of posterior palatal seal and how to record posterior palatal seal. So what is posterior palatal seal? In normal language, the soft tissue along the junction of hard and soft palate creates an area which is known as posterior palatal seal. Now can we apply pressure on it? Yes, but within physiologic limits. And why do we need to record it? To get better retention. In other words, we can also say posterior palatal seal is the area between the two vibrating lines, the anterior vibrating line and the posterior vibrating line. Now what are vibrating lines? Vibrating lines are imaginary line across the posterior part of the palate making the division between the movable and immovable tissues of the soft palate. Anterior vibrating line it is always on soft palate. And why it is created? It is created due to the projection of posterior nasal spine. The anterior vibrating line is not a straight line but takes the shape of Cupid's bow. When you ask patient to say ah in short vigorous burst, you can record anterior vibrating line. It is also known as Valsalva maneuver, right? And the posterior vibrating line, it is at the junction of aponeurosis of tensor villi palatini muscle and the musculature of the soft palate. To record it, you can ask patient to say ah in short burst, but in unexaggerated manner. Pterygomaxillary seal extends through the hamular notch for 3 to 4 mm enterolaterally, approximating the muco gingival junction. So, what is the significance of posterior palatal seal? It has two different functions in impression tray and complete denture. So, in the impression tray, it establishes positive contact posteriorly and prevents the impression wash material from sliding down the pharynx. And also it guides the positioning of impression tray and it creates slight displacement of soft tissues. It also helps verify retention and seal of potential denture border. And in the complete denture, primary function of posterior palatal seal is retention. It prevents the food accumulation beneath the posterior aspects of the denture. Reduces the patient discomfort when contact occur between dorsum of the tongue and posterior part of denture. It compensates for volumetric shrinkage that occur during polymerization of methyl -meth acrylate resin. Now how we will record posterior palatal seal? So there are basically two methods, scrapping of the cast and fluid wax technique. In this video, we are going to study about the functional scrapping of the cast and fluid wax technique. Major difference between the scrapping the cast and fluid wax technique is at which step we are recording posterior palatal seal. Okay, so in the conventional approach of scrapping the cast, this procedure is done after the wash impression is made with zinc oxide eugenol and master cast is poured. So first of all, the hamular notch is palpated using T burnisher as you can see in the image. After that, the hamular notch is marked using the indelible pencil. And now the posterior vibrating line is marked between the movable and immovable part of the soft palate. The line marked in the hamular notch is connected with the posterior vibrating line using an indelible pencil. This will form the posterior border of the denture. And the trial base is inserted into patient's mouth so that the indelible markings are transferred to the trial base and the markings on the trial base can be refined if necessary. The trial base is seated on master cast to transfer the markings marked in the patient's mouth to the cast. So first we'll mark the posterior vibrating line and hamular notches in the patient's mouth and then we will transfer it to our master cast via trial base. Interior vibrating line is marked at the junction of the hard and soft palate using the indelible pencil. As you can see very clearly in the image. Now the markings of the anterior and posterior vibrating lines are transferred to the cast and the cast should be scrubbed to a depth of 1 to 1.5 mm in the area between the two vibrating lines. The darkly shaded area shows the area to be scrubbed. After scrapping the master cast, the post dam should be checked, the trial base should be softened and readapted. 
Presence of a space between the base plate and the soft tissue indicates improper or under post damming. Now the fluid wax technique. This technique is done immediately after making the wash impression and before pouring the master cast. This is the main difference between the scrapping method and the fluid wax technique. So zinc oxide eugenol and impression plaster are suitable impression material for this technique as fluid wax adheres well to them. Interior and posterior vibrating lines are marked as described in the conventional technique and these lines are marked in the patient's mouth immediately after making wash impression zinc oxide eugenol and the markings are transferred to the secondary or wash impression by reseating the impression in the mouth. The wash impression is painted with fluid wax. Commonly used waxes are Iowa wax or Correcta wax number no. 4. And the wax should be painted only within the margins of the palatal seal marked on the impression. As you can see here the green dark area. It shows the application of fluid wax in the post dam area. Usually it is applied in excess and cooled below mouth temperature so that it gains resistance to flow. The patient's head should be positioned such that the Frankfurt horizontal plane is 30 degree below the horizontal plane. It is only at this position that the soft palate is at its maximal downward and forward functional position. Patient's tongue should be positioned such that it is at the level of the mandibular interiors. After positioning the head and the tongue, the impression tray is inserted into the mouth and the patient is asked to make a rotational movement of the head without altering the plane to record the functional movement of the palate. Impression is removed after 4-6 minutes and it is examined. Impression should be held for 3-5 to five minutes under gentle pressure and 2-3 to three minutes under firm pressure applied in the mid palatine area. The procedure is repeated till even tissue contact is achieved. As you can see here, after achieving even tissue contact, the impression is removed and examined. Wax in the region of anterior vibrating line, here the arrow shows it, it should have a knife edge margin. Blunt margin indicate improper flow and the impression should be repeated. This is how we record posterior palatal seal. I hope this video was useful. Thanks for listening. See you in the next video.